Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Tim and this is Tim the Trailman. And today I'm gonna to be comparing a popular question that I see on a lot of social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, different groups and things is the question is about, do I want spotlights or floodlights or a combination of both when I'm putting auxiliary lighting on my rig? And then of course the question is, is it up high? Is it in the middle, kind of like ditch lights? Or is it more low and like an aftermarket bumper or fog light style things? So today all my examples are gonna be in an amber or a yellow type color. Amber versus white is a completely different conversation. Today we're just talking about pattern of light. Spot versus flood versus combination. And today I'm gonna to be using all the last fit lighting. I've been using them for a couple months now and so just kind of playing around where to put them and how to use them. This isn't a product review as much as it is a type of pattern for your lighting. Thank you to LastFit for providing the lights. Okay, so it all started a couple months ago when I was wheeling in North Carolina. It was a really foggy night and I had already gotten the LastFit lights that are these outer ones. They are a flood type pattern and I had them mounted as a ditch light. So you can see here when we were wheeling and it was super foggy that I actually could just kind of see in front of me up high but not down low. So that gave me the idea of, hey, ditch lights aren't ideal necessarily for fog but they could be used lower down so I could see more of the trail right in front of me. Then it got me to thinking, maybe I want some spotlights down there too. I did have the light bar that was in the grill for that trip. The amber color did not seem to be doing as well in a combination pattern, and I wasn't as big of a fan for the amber as opposed to the yellow. So I used the ditch lights more than I used the light bar just for that situation. It could be different dust or just regular nighttime. So I did a little research online and I found out that there are some mods that you can put on the Forerunner and mount the lights behind the grill and whether or not you even have the TSS or not. That's gonna be a separate video on how I did that and the products I used. This one's just for the lighting patterns. So let's get going. Okay, so you can see here, starting with the yellow spotlights, they're the inner ones on my setup next to the TSS. With the drone footage, you can see that the spot pattern is very intense, it's very focused, and it shoots a lot further into the scenery at nighttime lighting up exactly where it's pointing. If it was to move to the left or right, you'd be able to follow that beam. And at the end, we're gonna be seeing driving down the road footage as well. So moving on to the flood pattern, those are the outer two lights. Now you can see that they don't shoot as far into the scenery, but they do shoot just right there in front of the vehicle in a much wider pattern, much more coverage, and it's gonna light up right there in front of you. So I think that's gonna be ideal for the fog specifically and then the spot could help out as well because it is yellow. Okay, so we're gonna move up to the light bar that's above the Toyota badge. This is a unique situation because a lot of light bars do come in a combo pattern or a spot pattern. I once saw on a YouTube video, unrelated to lighting completely, the idea that if one thing does two things at the same time, it neither does one or the other at the best of abilities, they have it shortcoming. Let's take a look at the combo pattern. So with the drone footage, you can see that it is amber. It does have good output. The flood pattern is solid. The spot pattern there, that it does shoot further. So you can see where the flood pattern stops, the spot pattern picks up. But let's take a quick look where the yellow lights, fog versus spot, they both do much better in their own lane versus a combo. But if you can only pick one, maybe the combo pattern is right for you. So I do agree with that other YouTube video that if one item tries to do two separate things at the same time, it doesn't do either of them at its best abilities, but it does get the job done as a combo. A quick shout out to my patrons. Your support means a lot to me and the channel. And if you'd like to be a patron too, please head on over to patreon.com forward slash Tim the Trailman. Okay, so let's jump into the car and then be heading on down the road. We're gonna look at some footage here from the windshield to see kind of how the spot pattern and the combo pattern light up. You can see there again while driving that the spot pattern is very intense, very focused, straight in front of the forerunner. And then turning on the flood pattern of the yellow lights, the flood pattern does not shoot as far, but it does cover right there in front of the vehicle as well. Then here is the light bar. The light bar being the combo pattern and an amber, you get a little bit more distance, you get a little bit more coverage as the flood, but it doesn't go as far as a spot pattern alone and it doesn't cover the intensity of a flood pattern either. Okay, so wrapping up the coverage of a flood pattern versus a spot pattern versus a combo pattern, let me know in the comments which one you believe works best for you and where you're gonna mount them on the car. Rule of thumb normally is gonna be the higher the light, the closer to a spot pattern only, more middle of the vehicle is gonna be maybe a combo pattern, and then the lower it is, you're gonna want a flood pattern. 
Of course, that has to do with the part of terrain or the part of the country that you're living in, if it's open land or forest service roads. On a forest service road, a combo pattern is gonna be your go-to because you don't necessarily need to see far down the trail because of all the obstruction of trees, rocks, and things like that, and the corners. Out west, you're gonna see much more benefits of a spot pattern because if you line them up side by side, you're gonna have the intensity that shoots that farther. So that's the way that I know how to produce the lighting. And then of course, talking amber versus white, again, is a different topic. But spot up high, flood down low. If you'd like to see more content like this, hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, and thank you for watching.